Hello, my dear students. Today we are going to discuss uh, this short topic, spermatogenesis, which is uh, an important topic with respect to your NEET as well as board examinations. So, let's discuss this topic. You all know that spermatogenesis is formation of male gametes. So, if you are ever asked what is it, so we'll say it is formation of male gametes or what we also call as sperms. Now, you know that this spermatogenesis occurs in the quilid tubules called the seminiferous tubules which are located inside the testicular compartments okay so everyone knows that the testes has these compartments what we call as testicular compartments and each testicular compartment contains these quilid tubules what we call as seminiferous tubules so these quilid tubules are called as seminiferous tubules so right these quilid tubules they are seminiferous tubules and if you are ever asked why does spermatogenesis occur we all will say seminiferous tubules so we'll remember that this occurs inside seminiferous tubules seminiferous tubules but if you are asked which cell inside the seminiferous tubules is responsible for this spermatogenesis so everyone knows or we should know that it is a cell called spermatogonia okay so it occurs from cells called spermatogonia spermatogonia okay so basically we are clear with the things that spermatogenesis is formation of the male gametes or what we call as sperms we are clear that it occurs inside these seminiferous tubules and we are also clear that the cells which help or which do this spermatogenesis are called as spermatogonia. Now everyone should know that these spermatogonia, these are actually diploid cells. So these are two and diploid cells. And in case of males, the diploid number is written as 44 plus XY. These 44 are autosomes. And these XY are allosomes or sex chromosomes. Now, everyone must know that spermatogonia are of two types. Spermatogonia, they are of two types. Type A and type B. Type A and type B. And you may be knowing that type A spermatogonia are actually the stem cells. They keep producing new and new spermatogonia. And they are maintaining the pool of spermatogonia. And that's why males never have the andropause. And type 2 spermatogonia are which are actually going to do the meiosis. So they enter the meiosis. Meiosis. So if I draw this type B spermatogonia right here, this is a type B spermatogonia. This is a type B spermatogonium. Singular term is spermatogonium. So I have this type B spermatogonium here and this is a diploid cell everyone knows and this 2n is equal to 44 plus xy we have kept that in mind. Now you all know the when the cell undergoes duration so it first enters the interphase and in that interphase we have the S phase where DNA duplication takes place. But right now we are assuming that this type 2 spermatogonium has not entered that interphase so its chromosomes will be having single chromatid. We can see chromosomes in two shapes like this or like this. This type of chromosome has a single chromatid. It has a single chromatid and this type of chromosome will be found when the cell has not done the DNA duplication or replication. And this type of chromosome has two identical chromatids. It has two identical chromatids and this type of chromosome is uh, derived when uh, obtained when the cell enters the interphase or completes the synthesis of DNA or replication of DNA in the S phase. Now we are assuming that type 2 spermatogonium, type B spermatogonium has not undergone interphase. So it is having a single chromatid in each of its chromosomes. So if we calculate the total number of chromatids, they will be total chromosomes are 44 plus XY that is 46. So we'll be having number of chromatids equals 46 into 1 that is 46. So total chromatids will be 46. So total chromatids will be 46. Total chromatids will be 46 in this type 2 type B spermatogonium okay? because 46 are the total number of chromosomes and there are one chromatid there is one chromatid in each chromosome now what happens is this type B spermatogonium enters the interphase or growth phase so it enters the interphase or growth phase interphase or growth phase 
interface or growth phase and this inter in this interface this type b spermatogonium undergoes dna duplication duplication of the organelles and it becomes a larger cell it is still deployed it has not divided its nucleus is yet to divide its cytoplasm yet to divide so it's still deployed so the two n will be equal to 44 plus xy but because it has undergone the growth phase there will be two chromatids there will be two chromatids in each chromosome so if we calculate the total number of chromatids that will be equal to 46 into 2 that is 92 so this new cell is called as primary spermatocyte this is called primary spermatocyte i hope you are able to follow me i had this type b spermatogonium to start with and this type b spermatogonium entered the growth phase or interphase where it duplicated its dna and became a larger cell called as primary spermatocyte not only the dna but also it is metabolites and organelles so initially we were have we were having 46 chromosome with one chromatid in each chromosome so total chromatids were 46 but now we have these same 46 chromosomes uh, because of the DNA replication, now we have two chromatids in each chromosome. So total number of chromatids will be equal to 46 into 2, that is 92. Now this primary spermatocyte, this undergoes meiosis first. So this primary spermatocyte, it undergoes meiosis first. And everyone knows what happens in meiosis first. Uh, in meiosis first, there is reduction in the number of chromosomes. So in meiosis first, there is reduction in number of chromosomes. Reduction in number of chromosomes. Nothing happens with the number of chromatids. Only there is reduction in chromosomes. Half chromosomes go on one side and half chromosomes go to the other cell. So we now get these two cells. We now get these two cells. Both are having n number of chromosomes. Because in meiosis 1, there is reduction in the number of chromosomes. Now, one of these cells will be having the genotype of 22 plus X. And one of these cells will be having the genotype 22 plus Y because x and y will go to the opposite sides one will be receiving the x chromosome one will be receiving the uh, y chromosome but as i already said in meiosis one there is nothing done to the number of chromatids number of chromatids remains same so on this side we'll be having two chromosome chromatids in each chromosome and this side also we are having two chromatids in each chromosome but if we calculate the total number of chromatids i think you are able to follow me we have 23 chromosomes now total 22 plus this x 23 chromosomes still having two chromatids in each chromosome so total number of chromatids will be 46 and on this side also we'll be having 46 chromatids okay now you must know that this type of sperm uh, which we have on this side it is having x chromosome and oom is always having x chromosome so if this chromosome fuses with the oom it will form a female of fetus so it is called as gynosperm this type of sperm is called gynosperm and this sperm uh, if it fuses with the oom uh, we get a male fetus so it is called as androsperm it is called as androsperm and these cells we call them as secondary spermatocytes these are called as secondary spermatocytes secondary spermatocytes so same is the case with this cell this is a gynosperm secondary sp spermatocyte this is androsperm secondary spermatocyte now after this these secondary spermatocytes both of these undergo meiosis second both of these undergo meiosis second and in this meiosis second there is nothing done to the number of chromosomes only the number of chromatids is reduced just like in the mitosis so we again get these haploid cells two on each side and these haploid cells will be having the genotype of n equals 22 plus x on this side both of them and n equals 22 plus y on this side but we must know that in meiosis second number of chromatids will be reduced so we'll be having single chromatid in each of these cells so total chromatids will be 23 into 1 that is 23 and on this side also these new cells which are formed after meiosis second these are called as spermatids these are called spermatids same on this side so we have total of four spermatids and if ever we are asked what is the genotype of these spermatids, we'll say half of them, that is the 50% will be having 22 plus X and 50% will be having 22 plus Y. But we must also note that they will be having single chromatid in each chromosome because in meiosis second, the number of chromatids has been reduced. Okay, but we must know that these spermatids, they are immature. They are immature sperms. They are not fully functional sperms. They are immature sperms. So what happens? these immature spermatids 
they attach to the special cells called as sertoli cells they attach to the special cells called as sertoli cells and those sertoli cells give some nourishing factors called as permeogenic factors which are received by these spermatids spermiogenic factors factors and by receiving those spermiogenic factors all these spermatids get converted into these functional sperms also called as spermatozoa also called as spermatozoa so these spermatids get converted into spermatozoa by receiving these spermiogenic factors this process my dear students is called as spermiogenesis this process is called as spermiogenesis this is often asked what is spermiogenesis it is a transformation of the immature sperms into mature spermatozoa immature spermatids into mature spermatozoa now these spermatozoa are released into the ducts which is called as spermiation they are then released into ducts and that process is called as spermiation that's called as spermiation that's all about the uh, spermatogenesis so let's recall from the beginning what did we study spermatogenesis this formation of the male gametes or sperms it occurs inside the seminiferous tubules and the cell responsible for this is spermatogonia which is a diploid cell having 44 autosomes and xy allosomes total of 46 chromosomes now these spermatogonia they are of two types type a which act as stem cells and keep forming new and new spermatogonia so that males never undergo andropause and type b spermatogonia which actually enter the meiosis now these type b spermatogonia these type b spermatogonia they initially undergo the growth phase and if we know that they are diploid cells 44 plus xy but we must also remember they have not entered the growth phase initially so each one of them is having a single chromatid in their chromosomes in its chromosome uh, so total number of chromatids will be 46 into 1 that's 46 now after entering the growth phase it gets converted into this cell called primary spermatocyte this primary spermatocyte is again diploid 44 plus xy 44 plus xy but as the dna duplication has taken place inside the growth phase so we'll be having two chromatids in each chromosome so total number of chromatids is 46 into 2 that's 92 now after this the primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis first and in this meiosis first there is reduction in the number of chromosomes nothing happens with the number of chromatids so we get these haploid cells called as secondary spermatocytes these secondary spermatocytes half of them 50 percent of them will be 22 plus x and 50 percent will be 22 plus y these 22 plus x secondary spermatocytes are called gynosperms and the 22 plus y types are called as endosperms but each one of them is having two chromatids in each chromosome so total chromatids in each one of them is 23 into 2 as the number of chromosomes is now halved 23 into 2 and this is 46 total number of chromatids after this the secondary spermatocytes undergo meiosis second and in this meiosis second there is reduction in the number of chromatids so the polyd remains same they are all haploid 22 plus x half of them and 22 plus y half of them but as the number of chromatids have been reduced total number of chromatids will be 23 into 1 that is 23 these uh, cells four cells are called spermatids and these spermatids are immature so they attach to sertoli cells in order to receive these chemicals called spermiogenic factors called spermiogenic factors and after receiving these chemicals called spermiogenic factors they transform into these four functional sperms or spermatozoa this process is called as spermiogenesis and after spermiogenesis these spermatozoa are released into the ducts which is called as spermiation that was a very crisp and detailed lecture on this short lecture on this topic spermatogenesis which is very very essential for uh, for your neat examination as well as board examination I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a very nice day.